Hey, welcome to the Photo Flunky Show, episode 143. Today's episode, we're going to be talking about whether you should process your photos with a natural look, or maybe if you should go a little bit more artistically. Thank you for joining us on the Photo Flunky Show. My name is William Beam. My name is Lee Beam. And if you hadn't guessed, we're married. Yes, very much so, on purpose. Yes, and we're here to help photographers become better visual storytellers. And honestly, we think that this is one of the things that helps you with your storytelling, and that's the way that you end up processing your photo. And there's really no right or wrong answer overall, but there may be a right or wrong answer depending upon the photograph that you're using or trying to finish off. But before we get started with that, I want to let you know that show notes are going to be available at williambeam.com slash episode 143. So let's start off with, you know, the basically the question is like, when does a photo look best if it's processed naturally and art, or artistically? And, and when I say naturally, I mean kind of like as you saw it. If you're looking at a subject, whether it be a landscape, a portrait of somebody, do you want to process it as you saw it? Or do you want to put on some color grading, some filters, or some kind of artistic statement on it? To me, it always comes down to where are you going to use the photo? What is your purpose for the photo? I, I don't think there's a right or wrong style that you can just state and say this is the better way to do it because both ways are the best way in certain situations. But how and where are you going to use that photo? Even like you know where in what format is it going to be shared? Is it going to be an enormous uh, canvas print? Is it going to be shared online? Is it for social media? Is it an an ad poster? You know what, but we've seen advertisements before that didn't have a natural look. Some some do, and then some have a very stylized look. Mm -hmm. If you think back to the old iPod commercials, you know, where they had the dancing silhouettes. Yes. That was a very stylized kind of look to something. And whether it was just the posters that were still or the television commercials where they're moving, there was a lot of style to that motion going on. I mean, you had the the black silhouette of the people dancing, but you still had like the white earbuds, you know, coming out of them. Yeah. And they were showing off their product. I think that worked. It did, and I know why. Why? When you are deciding if you want to do something and go kind of to the extreme end of artistic, it has to be done with integrity. You know, something like that Apple example that you used, they were not trying to make people believe that that's exactly what things looked like. It was clear they'd gone a creative rot with it and that's what they were doing. I think you lose your integrity when you take something and you make it unrealistic, and that could be by completely manipulating the image entirely um, in, in Photoshop or elsewhere, or really just changing it up and, and overworking it, and then trying to visually sell it as if, oh, no, that's really what it looked like. That, to me, is is where the first line gets crossed. I think that line does get crossed at times, and the question is whether it's intentional or not. Some people are trying to enhance a photo so much that... They kind of make it something that I, I don't particularly care for, but I can't say too much because I look at some of my old photos from years past, particularly when I was doing HDR, and I, I would never process a photo like those today. I'm the same looking and, at mine. And I think styles do change. Yes. But one of the things that I thought of with you know doing something artistic, maybe something as simple as color grading, could be, is this your signature look for your photographs? Yes. Is this what ties them all together? It says, you know the same photographer took these photos. Yeah, your individual style. There is someone on 500px who takes, you know, portraits, and I really love the location that he has. I really love the models that he has. I think his composition is great. And But I brought this up on a previous episode. I hate his post-processing. Yeah. There's a very subtle baby blue. Actually, it's not even so subtle. There's almost hit you over the head with a baby blue kind of tint to it somehow. It's like all the... Not not the shadows, but basically even in skin tones and the walls, you can just see like there's this kind of baby blue look to it. And I thought, this is horrible. So it He's all looks a, like aliens. If he had done it in a natural kind of way, I would have loved these photos without a second thought. But looking at every photo that he does, I can easily identify who the photographer is. And yet, despite the fact that the photography itself is very good, the post-processing makes me really not like his photos. I think you're always going to have a group of people who don't like your style of photos. They may not like the type of the genre you're into or, you know, maybe not 
the way that you you post process your stuff but you're you're always going to attract some and repel others i'm i'm okay with that because i think that is just the reality you're never going to please everybody but I guess I have a look at it and think, who am I attracting with my photos? Who is my audience? And if you know who you want to reach, that's your first, your first hint. I think that's part of it, but that's not my first hint. My first hint is what am I trying to say? And as we like to say on the show, what is the story you're trying to tell? I don't know of a story that really requires, you know, making your subjects look blue, but that's, that's his story. That's his way of doing it. I am thinking on what am I going to say? So in other words, am I going to warm this photo up or cool it down? Mm-hmm. Am I going to use a lot of contrast or am I going to maybe make it look a little faded? I, I, I don't go for the faded look myself. I know that's very popular with a lot of people where they really reduce the contrast. I'm I'm not on that end of the spectrum, but I do recognize it as something that you know, it's, it's a valid way of making things work, particularly in advertising where you want to show somebody maybe with your product or your service, but you don't want them to overpower maybe the text that's on the page or yes. the logo. And there are times when those kind of photographs work very well. For graphics, it, it works incredibly well. Yeah, it's like an old screen wash. I mean, I, I don't know if everybody remembers that. I used to, when I was a kid and was in graphic design class, we were doing things with gels and, and silk screening. Yes. <laughs> and that's how you did graphic design was, was with silk screening and a squeegee. Well, it was fun. Hands on, right? Yeah. So now now it's Photoshop instead of uh, squeegees and it smells a lot better. <laughs> all right. I'm showing my age, but all right. So when you take a photograph, how do you look at it and decide, is this going to be a natural photo or is it going to have something with more of an artistic edge to it? Or do you? I guess I don't really. Look, for me, instinctively, I go for something that's going to be natural and yes i absolutely enhance my photos because the camera misses a lot of the dynamic range and it needs some help it kind of loses some of the natural saturation as you see it uh dslr is you know shooting raw you're going to lose some sharpness you have to work on the photo but what i try to do is to bring it from the photo i went you know from the photo that was captured from that image i went to bring that back more to the way that I saw things in real life. And anyone who's taken a photo of a sunrise or a sunset, you know how you look at those colors and you think, oh, wow, look at that sky. And then when you look at the, the photo, it's, um, yeah, it, it looks a little bit flat. It, it, well, the raw image is, is going to be flat. Yeah. But here's the question. Let's say we're talking about a sunset over some water or over a city, you know, whatever the sunset is. You remember how it looked, but have you ever changed the color of the sunset? So now instead of just blue turning into yellow and maybe now it's got some lavender or red in it that wasn't there at the time you did it i i don't know if i've done it but i'm actually not not opposed to doing it because it can look absolutely beautiful i don't have a problem with that honestly i don't i think it's it's to what extent you start manipulating things and does it does it go if they blend it's kind of okay to have sunrise colors mixed with the sunset if those colors work for that photo But a lot of the time, nature has its color code pretty much where it should be. And it's a bit of a giveaway if you mess with it, if anybody stops and actually thinks about it. I was reminded by this, an advertisement I saw for some post-processing, you know, tools and different skies and so forth. And we've seen, you know, different shades at sunset. Sometimes we'll look down the road and we'll see a really orange sunset. And we're thinking, wow, that's that's different. Instead of just, you know, turning into blue hour and we see kind of like a really bright orange sunset. I don't know what causes it, but that happens. But when I was looking at some of the presets or the skies used to use for replacement, they were like um, pastel colors. You know, there were lavenders and pinks Mm -hmm. and things that I just don't see in the sky. No, you don't. You see, it depends where those photos are going to be used. Sometimes people share a photo, but they actually have an intended purpose to use it for something else. But they'll share the photo as is. Like, for example... Say I took a picture of something and I wanted to put a graphic on to advertise some event that's coming up. And I loved the photo I took, but I knew that I was going to be doing stuff, you know, adding text over that photo. If I'm sharing it with my friends, I'm, I'm not really putting all the text out there because it's probably not relevant. But I may share the photo as I have it before I start adding all that, that stuff on top. And I guess that's not with an intent to deceive. It, there'd probably be a caption on there. The, the time that I have a problem, I think it was earlier this week, I was having breakfast and somebody had commented on a photo that, that had been shared. I think it might have been on Facebook. 
and basically this was a was a sunset or some kind of landscape photo it was yeah. beautiful i mean it really was beautiful it was not over processed but it was definitely processed but i mean I, I loved what the photographer had done the only issue i had is that he claimed that this was straight out of camera oh that's right and i clicked on it and saw when i saw the camera and the lens that this guy was using i thought this guy's shooting raw that is not a raw photo there is just no way and that's where i um i, I didn't like it i didn't comment you know what it, it's even if it wasn't the raw image because you can shoot like raw plus jpeg and maybe you have you know vivid or some of those presets that are in there that sun that you were talking about that sky that was not straight Th- there's out of the no ways that, that has and to have the shadows lifted as I, well i don't know why people get this sense of elation by saying this is straight out of camera i thought well you're then lazy that, then yeah that means you haven't finished it yet <laughs> you know every photo needs sharpening at the very least finish your work yeah. so it's like you go into lightroom and, and photoshop to finish your photos not necessarily that you have to change them i'm not opposed to changing them you know one of my best sold photos is of united states capitol building well when i took it there was not a cloud in the sky i actually ended up taking the sky from down in Sanibel, Florida, <laughs> sunset there, and putting it behind the Capitol building, and then flipping it and inverting it to put in the glass that's in the front. Because, you know, if you look down at that, there should be a reflection of what's in the sky. Mm-hmm. It works. No one's really bought into the idea yet that that wasn't taken, you know, just as one frame. That <laughs> that was an HDR with a sky from Sanibel, Florida. And you know what? It But it looks it looks natural. It fits. I mean, it works. Yeah. Now, don't get me wrong. It also looks post processed. You can you can tell that I adjusted my levels on this. That I had put in some contrast and sharpening, and and basically I I processed the photo. But the whole thing looks natural. But it's really just a, a bunch of photos put together in a way that I thought was interesting. Yeah. But that's what I meant by natural photo is not so much what you did to get it, but how does the end result look? artistically you can do anything from you know just converting it to black and white to changing the colors around to changing the sky or putting things in or taking things out Mm -hmm. but mostly when i think of artistically i'm thinking of i think when people use filters on their photos or something that replicates that effect yeah can you imagine my 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 followers and my audience if i took photos of myself i'm quite open about the fact that i'm in my late 40s and if I took photos of myself after a workout and put some of these filters on that I looked younger than our 16 year old daughter, that's fine. If people only see your picture and you want to try and convince them that, but I step outside my door and people see me, I'd, I really would hate for them to be thinking, Oh my goodness, I've she's had, just aged 40 years. I've, I've been working with, you know, some various athletes and I was surprised to find out that they really didn't want me to show the photos even after uh, skin smoothing. It's like, oh, no, 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 I, I need more skin smoothing on this. And it's not just one person. I mean, this has been multiple people that have done the same thing. They really want to smear their face so that people think that they're much younger than they are. And I thought, you know, you guys look beautiful as you are. I, yeah. I didn't see the need for it, but this is this is how they wanted to be presented in front of their audience. To me, that's not natural. That's, that's I'm not sure if it's artistic, but it's definitely heavy handed on the processing. Yeah. You can soften my crow's feet, but they're there. <laughs> I, I'm not trying, you know, but you know, here's on the opposite end. I was just showing you a photo earlier today of a young woman who's physically fit and the photographer did the post-processing on her with kind of like a sports, a gritty kind of sports, um, look to it. Now, clearly the woman was athletic but and I, young and young, but I didn't think that that kind of gritty look really enhanced or flattered the photo. No, because her face and her skin had a lot of black in it. You know, that kind of grainy, you get those yeah. little black dots. It almost looks like she's grimy, like, what, were you cleaning chimneys? But that was that was intentional. And you know what? If you did that on a football pl- player, I'd get it. You do that on a woman, I, I don't get it. Yeah. And that's kind of what we were talking about. It's like, when does a photo look best? I think it really depends upon your subject. And we have some probably norms or expectations of what you do to the various subjects. Yeah, I think it's a setting as well. Like, where is the subject? What you know? I get that in this particular one, um, this was supposed to be a bit of a rough and tough look, and it fitted. But the skin in for a young girl, I think, is an exception, and that could have really made the subject stand out if everything else was kind of, you know, cool and gritty. I, I actually liked the photo. Yeah, it was but a very well her, done photo. If her, I, I would have warmed up and left her skin more on the natural side. 
I, I think so. I would have done the same too. That would have really made her a pop out. But I, I've seen this done on, like I said, on football players or male athletes, and it doesn't bother me at all. I'm, I know it's not a natural look, but you, you kind of go for that whole style. I think men's skin, we expect it a little bit more. We tolerate a bit more. Whereas on a woman's skin, it, it doesn't have really the same kind of flattering appeal. No, it really doesn't. At least I, that's, that's my take I on it. I don't need blue or green skin. Thank you. No. Now, there are different ways to style your photos besides doing it in post-processing. And the one that's kind of coming to mind is with the off-camera flash and putting on different gels. Mm -hmm. And we've seen this example, you know, particularly with some models being posed with different gels on their skin. And it gets an interesting look. It's definitely a very highly stylized and artistic look. It's definitely not a natural look. If you see an orange gel on one side and a blue on another, or maybe there's a combination of cyan and purple. And if you've got Lightroom, you know, when you start it off with the, the current version, there's a model right there who's, she's got a couple of different gels on her skin. Mm -hmm. I think it looks good. I like it. It's, it's something that's not really expected, but it's not a natural look either. It's not, but it's, it is very artistic and it's, it's visually appealing. But that's mostly, I guess, playing with a light and using light and shadow or light and color to kind of stylize your photos rather than doing it in post-processing with a filter or, or some other tool. That's true. Yeah. But how much post-processing is too much? You All right. Let me bring this back to what we were talking about with HDR. And we both said that we would not process our photos the same way today that we did back then. Uh -huh. I think it was the gritty look. I mean, particularly even then you knew that clouds should not be black. Yeah, you know, storm clouds, maybe. Mm -hmm. But when you're looking at a scene and you've overdone your HDR and you've got black clouds, you've got a halo around it, those are very obvious signs of something that's been overprocessed. Yes. But even today, if it, even if it's not HDR, I still see some photos, I think, where sharpening or clarity has been pushed a little too I was going to say, you know, my default with the clarity slider in my photos goes left, not right. Do you have a mm -hmm. limit on how far you're going to push clarity if you want to put some grit in? Or do you just do it selectively? very selectively um actually some there's there are some situations where i don't uh, where i will touch it i'd say around 10 is probably as far as i've ever needed to push it because i find that using other sliders can get the effect i went with arts causing damage to the edges of you know of each color and each on the color side i guess i was thinking there are other sliders that have the same issues. Like, you know, whether you're going to use saturation slider and make everything neon, or if you're just going to use the vibrance to pull up a few of the colors. Yeah, I tend not to use saturation the at only, all, the except only time for fireworks. I, the only time I use saturation these days is to pull it downward. I've pulled it downward a little bit. Sometimes, you know, for example, at the time that I'm getting back in the mornings now with the season changes, there is a lot of really warm light, but it's actually got a very yellow look to it. Mm -hmm. So when I take my picture, the sun's kind of not shining on me, but that light is right in my face. And I have to move the saturation a little bit and drop the, the temperature of my photos. And this is just with a phone. But even though that is the way that the photo comes out, it looks completely unnatural. And I have to lose a little bit of saturation, a little bit of, of warmth in there. There is, I guess if you go with some urban architecture photos or cityscapes, there are things that people do that I don't think look natural, but I'd like the processing. One of the styles lately is you kind of desaturate most of it, not completely, but just, you know, you, you leave just very subtle color in there. And then you go back in and you boost, you know, maybe the reds and yellows, mm -hmm. but like particularly a city like New York, you know, where you've got those yellow cabs going around, you kind of want them to stand out yeah. or there's warm yellow lights. So you boost those colors up and you kind of pull everything back and you, you make it a little bit gritty. I think you add some clarity in that. And just the, that little bit of post-processing gives it a very city kind of vibe in my mind. Yeah. You kind of want that gritty look to a certain, well, that kind of certain kinds of cities. Especially if there's a lot of brick around. saturated concrete look yeah. um, with the, the contrast of the whatever you've chosen, whatever color. Yeah. And mm -hmm. I've typically seen it done with, you know, kind of like yellow, orange and red you know, the warmer colors. Mm -hmm. I, I don't know how it would look if you tried to do the same thing with cooler colors. Maybe that would be an interesting take. Hmm. But those are kind of artistic styles that maybe it's not natural, but it seems to, it fits the subject. And I guess that's really what we're looking at is what fits your subject and the message you want to tell. Yeah. I mean, would you want to see a New York City, you know, street view in pastels? 
No, but I'm sure somebody's <laughs> done it. And I'm sure somebody's made it work somewhere for its um, intended purpose. Well, maybe in San Francisco, but I don't think in New York. No, well, probably not. But still, I, I don't, nothing would surprise, you know, creativity has no boundaries. And some things are going to appeal to people that I look and go, oh my God goodness what you know, were you smoking i'm not against pastels with some subjects you know some of the beach scenes that i've looked at and i, I mentioned those presets before the overlays that people had i thought looked pretty nice with the pastels and typically those were done with like engagements or couples you know walking down the beach they had a nice kind of a pastel look to the sunset and, yeah. and the surrounding area it worked it was because you know they're trying to show a loving couple and the environment was just perfect for them and I thought, you know what? I, I'm not a big fan of pastels for my own photos, but it really worked in this. I could see doing it. Yeah, but I mean, imagine like if if I went to a spa and I was or I was getting a you know kind of my feet massaged or whatever. I don't really want to walk into some gaudy, loud looking place. I actually wanted to feel calm and quiet. You know, don't don't speak to me now. Oh. Keep things soft. If I go in to get um, some crazy thing done on my nails, I don't do my nails, by the way. But, you know, if I went in to get something wild and adventurous done, I expect to see something bold. I walk in there and I see pastels. Uh, mm. Generally, when I see a, a, a nice spa, they have very calm, almost neutral colors or cool colors. So some of them I've seen, you know, with some very neutral kind of sand colors, others with a light blue or even a light green, just something that's meant to keep you calm and you know, almost bore you to death. So you close your eyes for massage. Yes. And hope that they don't speak to you throughout. You would not want to go in there and see a bunch of blind red. London buses. No, you wouldn't want to see graffiti on the walls, I guess, in your spa. No, not at and all. And you like graffiti, but, but I not do, your but spa. It, that's, that's an example. I mean, it's just, it's out of place in certain places. And where are you going to use your photo? Well, and that's what we keep coming back to, I think, with, you know, do you process your photos naturally, artistically? I think that, what we're looking at is it has to fit your subject. It has to fit the story that you want to tell. And if you look at your photos as kind of a group, you know, if this is going to be a portfolio or a gallery that you want to put together, you want something that unifies them and how you post process your photos can be that it could be your use of light, your subject and, and a number of other things that you're doing in camera, but your post processing can also have that kind of impact on how your photos stand together as a, as a unit. Yeah. All I want to say is like when taking photos of people, whether it's yourself or anybody else, no matter what device you use to take that photo, please remember that everybody's skin, even a newborn baby has pores. If you don't want pores, you guys need some face paint. You know, this is post processing um, that's gone too far. It is just, I mean, it is crazy. And I look at it. I mean, I know people who are older than me and they've got photos where they look younger than my daughter. It's like, no, you know, have you asked your mom if you want to call him? Um, it's it, it's just it's to me it, it's it's silly why why well this is this is something really about portraits that i see going wrong a number of times and this is where people take it too far they're really trying to enhance or flatter somebody but skin should have pores if you have wrinkles you don't eliminate the wrinkles you simply reduce them yeah and it's okay maybe to nip off maybe five percent of the width of the photo so they look just a little bit more slender than they are, but you don't want to take someone, look, look at me, I'm, well, look at me, I'm talking on a microphone. <laughs> you can't see me, but you know, I'm a big boy. I know that. And I, I look at my photos and I think, all right, I wish I were just a little bit thinner. And I can do that if I move my photo inward just about 5%. But if we did this where I looked completely different than what I am, I said, well, that's not me anymore. Yeah, exactly. If, when you process a photo or a portrait, I should say, it still should look like the person that you're processing unless your intent was to use them just basically as a mannequin and make something completely different. Yeah, when it comes to skin, if you've got a like a camera on your phone, like we've both got iPhones and the cameras are pretty good, but if you're in good lighting, your skin actually looks pretty good. That sometimes the lack of resolution works wonders. Yeah. You don't really need to do anything to it. And sometimes you don't necessarily want the sharpest lens possible for these portraits because you're trying to capture the essence of somebody, not necessarily every single little blemish and pore. And you add flash on top of that. You're going to be doing a lot of skin smoothing to make them look the way most people think, because you don't look at most people in a flash of an instant where they're not moving and you can see every little flaw and imperfection in their skin. And particularly if there's a flash that's putting shadows on the side of every pore, you need to compensate for that. But there's a limit as to how far you go. Eye whites should not be blinding white. 
No. And neither should teeth. N- neither should teeth. I mean, there's a certain level of whiteness, but it's like if you look at most of those, there's still, you know, a level of yellow in people's teeth and in their eyes. Mm-hmm. Because you don't want to make it 100% white. Same thing with eye color. Blue eyes are not actually full on blue, like a link on your website. <laughs> <laughs> And that's really where the, the interesting parts get is like if you overprocess the iris and it's too sharp and it's too many colors and it really jumps out at you, then you've lost the soul of the person. I mean, you're supposed to look into their eyes and understand them. But if their eyes are like laser beams and tigers jumping out at you at the same time, yes, I, I think that you don't have the person who you were photographing in the first place. Oh, that usually says run. Yeah. So uh, those were kind of what we were thinking. It was like, when do you go natural? When do you go artistic? There are times that you can do either with the same subject, but it really is going to come back down to what is the message and who are you shooting for and, and what are you delivering the message for? Yeah, absolutely. Know your purpose. Thank you so much for joining us on the Photo Flunky Show. As I said at the beginning, show notes are going to be available at williambeam.com slash episode 143. Hey, we also have a new website at photoflunky.com. And right now it's just a single page, but it's going to grow. And take a head over there. You'll see our player with this episode and plenty of others. And also links to subscribe if you want to go on to iTunes, Spotify, Google Radio, or Google Play, right? Mm-hmm. Google Play Stitcher Music. Stitcher Radio? No, Stitcher Radio there. And also, oh yeah, iHeartRadio. I knew there was a radio in there somewhere. <laughs> Check it out. We'd love to have your feedback on it. And we will have more to do on Photo Flunky besides the podcast coming in the future. But for right now, we just want to say thank you. We'll see you again next week. <laughs>